What's going on guys? I'm back with another build guide video. Today we're going to be looking at the Razor Crest from the Mandalorian show. Now, I know that a lot of people have made the Razor Crest already, and a lot of the designs are great. I have to admit that people have made some very good variations. However, I wanted to make my own because I felt like the ship itself that I've seen are really bulky and a little too janky for me. And really over the top, in my opinion. Like, most of them have three floors, and to me, I feel like the ship itself isn't that big. Um, already, I feel like my sh the ship, the way it is right now, with only two floors, is still too big. But I think in terms of the one to, like, person like, pers to ship scale, I think it's pretty spot on already. But, uh, no, and I, I do like the sleeker leak, um, sleeker look. Because in my opinion that the ship itself isn't meant to be that big. Like originally it's just the cargo hold with his arsenal. And then the cockpit. And that's basically it. So without further ado, let's get straight into it and show you guys the interior and what I, and what it looks like and why I picked it. So from here I put at the bottom floor. I put an armory and I picked the tail one because one it has the armory side on the on the right where you can put all your guns and ammo and everything like that and then on the left side there's the brig so that when he when you grab gather criminals and stuff like that you're able to store them away next up I picked the Armstrong cockpit because it gives it is in my opinion the most bounty hunter sort of criminal vibe uh, of the of all the cockpits and it is also my personal favorite after that i decided to use a uh, all-in-one berth for my crew so that they have, that way they have some kind of living space and it sort of fills in the ship you could also replace the the entire berth with just some um demos bracers just to fill it in just that way it's just a cockpit in the armory Especially if you're one of those players that just has like one companion, which would be enough. But I personally like to fly a little bit more with a few extra people. Alright, so let's get straight into the build. So here is the full list of everything I used to make this build. I uh, use the Teo All-in-One Berth 2x1 um, top and a, an armory uh, bottom, as well as a companion way that leads to the com uh, to the cockpit. And then I use an, uh, an Armstrong cockpit 10 uh, or higher. You can use whatever you want. I just used the 10 one because it, I didn't really need the extra stats. And so the way I'm setting this up right now is that I'm only putting those two floors because like I said in the beginning, you don't really need that much. I feel like the size of the ship itself with only two floors is enough. And I also really wanted to put um, the, the landing pad, a uh, landing gear right at the front, the NG-20 landing gear. Um, because in the original design, it has that right underneath the cockpit. And I felt like it was necessary to have that. Here, I also use the Deimos um, belly aft because I want to put it at the end of it to give it that uh, more of a smooth look. As well as the uh, like landing gear, like I said, put that right there. I am using the ship bed landing gear because um, it has a door and it's also the uh, one that fits perfectly with the actual design itself. Here at the top, I put two Deimos mid bracers Originally, when I made the ship, I had a captain's quarters there, but I felt like afterwards it just didn't fit. Here, I am putting the Deimos belly, um, and the only way to make it fit with the landing gear is to have it snap, because otherwise it doesn't fit. So, um, you should remember when you're doing that to have it snap, because it doesn't fit at all with the door of the dam of the landing gear of landing bay. Here, I use the Ion Beam HD30 reactor. Uh, mainly because it has um, its own case and it doesn't look like an exposed engine. 
And when it's properly colored, it fits really well with the um, with the ship itself. And then I used a Aurora 11G grab drive, mainly because it also fits with the design and I don't really need that much jump. And it plus it gives me 20 light years, uh, 30 light years already. I added two uh, Deimos wings um, at the back to finish off the edge, sort of like a cutoff triangle at the very back of the uh, of the ship. And then I also added two Deimos bumpers at the front so that it com um, it's um, combines with into the wing and gives it that sort of diamond feel that the original design has. I then added two horizon mount uh, weapon mounts near the cockpit because in the original design um, of Dinjarin's ship, it has two, his um, turrets or guns are right at the front, right next to the cockpit. But unfortunately, the Armstrong cockpit doesn't have any weapon mounts, so I had to substitute and put it as close as possible. Here I added two um, Deimos side caps on the, oh, four actually, on both sides, just to give it a, a smoother edge and fill it in a little bit more because I wanted to keep that particular version of the HAB um, in case I wanted to change stuff up or add some more guns. So basically the side caps are just temporary fill-ins until I decide to put something else. So right now the landing gear does not fit with the side caps onto the landing bay. So what I did then is um, at this point, I put guns before I put, uh, I attach it to the landing gear because I wasn't sure if the guns I'd be able to place them after I attach the landing gear and I didn't want to restart and everything. So I took the Strout, Stroud, I keep, for, I keep messing that up right underneath the landing gear so that then I could snap both landing gears on the side of the landing bay. So I delete the, the bracer and then just snap, snap without moving the at all the camera, otherwise it won't work. You have to keep it in, you can't move, just press A or any button to affirm, confirm the, the snapping, and then it should just connect on its own. Then I had the, the four extra guns in the front on the mounts, so that that way the two front, uh, two front side turrets are done. And then from here, I use two Deimos um, companionways. They don't actually connect to anything. They're just there uh, purely for visual. I wanted, uh, I like the look of that they give. Uh, for the wings and then I use um, two uh, Nova 50, uh, 1050 engines as my main uh, as my main thrust I then decided to use two M30 ULC's HE3 tanks right next to the Nova engines that way, the it completes the shape of the wing and uh, counts as my fuel. I then add two, uh, three equipment uh, mounts, plate mounts, onto the top of the ship. So that way I can then add my three exterminator helion beams. Afterwards, um... The thing is, with the helium beams, the fuel tanks uh, won't fit. So what I'm gonna have to, what I had to do here was then take um, some habs, connect them to the Deimos hab, duplicate them about three times, add the helium be, uh, not the helium, the fuel tank at the top, then delete the rows and then snap it into the middle so that it fits right beside the helion beams and then connects to the engine and then i repeat the same process on the other side and lastly what i use is two um tayo braking engines uh 
in front of the in front of the Nova engines, just to give it more like decoration and more aesthetic. I use that word a lot, but it's true. So from here on out, the ship is basically done. The only thing left is to paint it. So I use very basic colors. Uh, for color one, I used a sort of lighter shade of black. To give it a more that more metallic gray. Unfortunately, there's no like glossiness like control, so you can't really do much about that. Second color, I go for a little bit of a darker trim. And then for the final color, I just go with the basic orange on the recent bar. So what I do in the beginning here is that I just pick the colors, apply them. Then I remove it all, go back to what I, what I had done originally. Then I go back and select just the simple parts that I want, the individual parts that I want uh, with the orange colors. So that includes the cockpit, the, the, the Dale cowling, and then the companion way with the weapon mounts. To give it that orange painted paint job that the, that the ship originally has, as best as possible. Then for the rest of the ship, I just put the simple uh, gray and dark trim. I'd, I'd completely forgotten that I could just select everything and then deselect the parts that I already painted and completed. And I then proceed to finally finalize the paint job and complete the build. So as you can see, the ship is relatively simple to make, fairly straightforward, and to me, uh, visually accurate. So... Let's move on now and take her to the skies. All in all, I think that the ship itself in this sleek, more slim, not so armed to the teeth kind of design is relatively um, great in terms of uh, in terms of gameplay. Because like you guys noticed in my previous video, I do like the accuracy in terms of the designs when I'm creating the ships, especially when it comes to um, references like from movies or TV shows. So for this, this is perfect for me. I really like its design. It's it's really fun to use. And I'm not too, I'm not all really keen on ships that are too over the top built bulk, unless the design is really unique and um, creative and fun. Now, we're gonna test her out in combat and see how she feels. And that brings us to the end of the video, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this design. Um, I'm coming up with more. Uh, just currently working on fin finalizing and tweaking it a little bit more. So stay tuned. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any ideas or comments, please throw them down below. And if and including any inc like suggestions on how to better this design, I am open for comments. And until then, I'll see you next time.